Okay, here's here. Okay, mom. Man, I look so fat and ugly. Here's the video. Here's a next is four videos, but I'm combining in them into one for you to see of how a storm. Thank you, Christian. His album. Uh, that was Beautiful the title brush. track of his latest album. I'll be back. I'm gonna go brush my teeth, but you know. Home. Christian Ebner will be with us all night. This is uh, Heaven and Hell, uh, representing Heaven, Don Piper, <laughs> representing <laughs> Hell, uh, Reverend Howard Storm, and uh, it's just fun to say Reverend Storm is representing Hell. That's just kind of interesting. And if you just tuned in, uh, pay attention. Um, Reverend Howard Storm, you're right, uh, you were an agnostic, you an were an atheist. A atheist. atheist. Yeah. What's the difference again? I didn't believe in God. I, I um, thought anybody that believed in God was an idiot. Okay. Uh, look into the camera well, and uh, and, nice. and t talk to the people that are watching right now that think we're all idiots. Talk to them. <laughs> How did you used to think? Talk to them. I, um, any of you that don't believe in God, I just want you to know that I love you. Um, a lot of people here tonight love you. God loves you. And... Um, we're not going to hold it against you that you're ignorant. Um, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And I was a college professor. I was an arrogant son of a gun, to yeah. put it mildly. Yeah. Um, if you want a tough crowd to evangelize, go try and evangelize uh, on the college uh, campus. campus. Mm -hmm. But I had believed that Man was the measure of all things. And brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that if you don't believe in God, that doesn't mean you don't have a God. You've got a God. And your God is you. You think you're God. And you've got the puniest, most worthless God there is. Wow. Yourself, brother. And it's about time you got straightened out. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. There's a higher power. Good. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Okay, let me clarify one thing. You're not mad at me, right? <laughs> no? You're, you, I, I'm, I'm saying that out of love. I'm saying that out yeah. of love. I am. Okay. I, I would go out and I would go out. I'd give my life for my brothers and sisters if they could come to know how good God is. Mm. Okay. But you were just like them. The, the, yeah. the skeptic that is yeah. out there viewing. They've lost their mind completely. Uh, there is no afterlife. There is no out-of-body experiences. I'm you, sure. you yeah. were an educated college professor, and then what happened to University you? University of California, Berkeley, my alma mater. Oh, Come on now. <laughs> what, what happened to you? All of a sudden, you uh, saw what? At the age of 38 years old, I knew everything. I knew what was right. I know it was true, and I had um, a medical emergency. I had perforation of the du um, duodenum. I had a hole in my stomach. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering what a do bottom was. Yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said do bottom. Anyways, and um, sort of to cut to the chase, um, I was looking at my body. People um, were calling me outside the room, and I went to them, and they said that I had to go with them, and. The room was security because my uh, wife was there and my body was there and my roommate was there. Okay, wait. But Somebody said to you, like a like an angel said, "You got to go with us." They weren't. They weren't no angels. Okay, okay. so oh, I got but you. Go ahead. I'm but, I, but I was thinking. I kept saying to myself, "This is crazy. I don't believe in this. It can't be happening. This I doesn't gotcha. happen. This can't be real." Except that I knew. That it was the realest thing I was experiencing. It's actually it's hyper reality. That's I know it's hard to explain, but yeah. it was more real than this is real. And they were saying, "Come with us, hurry up, we know you." And they took me on a very long journey into an ever increasing closeness and darkness. Wow! And then um, I'm getting like really scared. And finally, I said, "I'm not going with you any further." And with that, they turned on me, and we began to fight. Now, if they had, there were a lot of them, hundreds, thousands, I don't know. If they had wanted to annihilate me, 
I mean, it would have been over in a few minutes, but that is not their interest. Hmm. What they want is torment. They want pain because they are so devoid of love, so devoid of hope, so devoid of good. There is, there's nothing left in them except pain, their pain, and they want to inflict that pain on others. And so um, I got to participate in their um, festival of pain. And um, I cannot talk about what they did because they are exquisite at debasing, tormenting, demeaning, and destroying you. And, I, and the physical pain does not begin to measure up to the psychological, emotional pain. Wow. Of tearing down every ounce of ego and pride and hope that you have. And um, this, when people talk about hell, hell isn't like this or that. If you had a thousand books of a thousand pages describing hell, it would only touch the surface of all the exquisite torments of hell. You mentioned Dante earlier. That it's but a tiny glimpse of what hell is. You know, people say, well, in your experience, you were in darkness and torment and stuff like that. And I said, yeah, that's an aspect of hell. This is, this, for every type of alienation from God, for every type of hatred of God, for every type of rejection of God, um, in whatever form that takes, there's a hell wow. for that. Wow. And there are, if you, I hate the expression, but kindred spirits, they're waiting for you, inviting you, taking you. Instead of the angels meeting people in a world of light and all that loveliness, there's people of darkness waiting for you to take you to be part of their world. Okay, hold that thought. What did you see, Don? Well, I was driving along in, an, uh, in a car on my way to church. Um... And I didn't make it. I was crossing a highway in the, in the middle of nowhere. Can. And the moment the, stru the truck struck me, an 18-wheeler across the center stripe hit me head on, I was killed instantly. And uh, I was immediately standing in, uh, in brilliance, uh, incredible light. And I was surrounded by people I had known and loved in life. People had preceded me in death. And uh, they were awesome. They were beautiful in every way. I mean, some of these people, I had, the last time I'd seen them, they'd been in a casket. They didn't look good. Uh, and yet when I saw them in heaven, they looked good. If you want to look good in heaven, <laughs> you'll look good in heaven. And uh, they were spectacular in every way. Uh, they were all followers uh, of Christ. They had declared that to me. They were all perfect, without spot, without blemish, without age. There's no age because there's no birth and death in heaven. You're eternal, so people are ageless. And, uh, and then the thing they had in common, which really kind of blew me away, something I really hadn't expected, or ever hadn't even thought about, was the people who greeted me at the gates of heaven all helped me get there. Mm -hmm. I was surrounded by people Amen. who had, they, they told me about Christ, they took me to church when I didn't have any other way to go as a young boy, they uh, lived a Christian life in front of me so I knew what one was. Yeah. The people who were there were not people I would have predicted to be there, but in retrospect, I know now why they were there. Wow. Whether they were 18 when they died, that particular 18-year-old took me to church when I was 15 and didn't have a driver's license. I mean, they all did something like that to help me get there, and they greeted me at the gates of heaven. They knew I was coming, and uh, people in heaven know who's on the way, and it was a spectacular reunion at the gates of heaven. So everything about your experience was love. Everything oh. about your experience was completely all the good stuff. There's one thing that's exactly like the experience that uh, that Howard just described, and that it, it's indescribable. Yeah. There are no yeah. earthly words to describe right. the majesty and the glory and the beauty and the love of heaven, or the brilliance of heaven. Yeah. Uh, we would be blinded by it with earthly eyes, uh, because in heaven God is light, and Jesus becomes the lamp of God rather than the Lamb of God like He is here on earth. So we're dazzled by their brilliance. There is no need for a sun or moon in heaven. They illuminate the place with their glory. Right. And so you would be blinded by that. It, it yeah. is the most real thing you've ever experienced, but it is indescribable. There are no words to describe how awesome it is. Let me give you the opportunity. Uh, there could be someone that has said, okay, over the last 10 minutes or so, uh, both of you guys have completely lost it. You're making this up. Uh, this is this is just what Don. You first. What do you say to people that are checking this program out, but think that both of you are totally making that up? 
Well, I would say uh, a statistic. Now you say a statistic on a show like this. Yeah, here's a statistic for you. The death rate here on Earth is 100%. Mm. And we're not getting out of this a lot. Very okay? accurate. We're not getting out of this a lot. 100%. And, and even, even at its most, it's not going to last but for 70, 80 years, maybe 90, maybe 100. So you know there's got to be something better than this, and I have good news. There is. Yeah. And you can go there. There is a way prepared for you to have a better life than the one you have ever had here. And Jesus is the way. One of his own followers, after following him around for three and a half years, listening to all that Jesus said and watching what he did, Thomas still asked, how do I go to heaven? And Jesus responded, I am the way. The truth and the life. If you want to go to the Father, you're going to have to go through Jesus the Son. And that was Jesus talking. So it is more real than this. Everything I saw there was more real than this. And I, I, I know yeah. Howard, I mean, that was more real than yeah. this is because this won't last. Okay, wait. Both of you have said that. How do you get more real than I'm here, I can feel, touch? Well, pe people ask me, was it like a dream? And I said, no, this is the dream. Yes. Yeah. You know, you know this uh, um, unreal quality to a dream. Like sometimes when you're dreaming, you're going, "This is a weird dream. I think I want to wake up now." Right. You know? yes. I mean, you, you know that the dream is an illusion. Um, the near-death experience, your your senses, your understanding, your comprehension is all so much heightened. Yes. So you can taste more, see more, feel more, hear more, yeah. know more. Yeah. You're just like it's so much more intense. You're going like life is like a dream compared. Yeah. This, to this doesn't seem real. Yeah. This doesn't seem real now compared to that. When you've been there, yeah. then you know that this is temporal. This is yeah. fleeting. This won't last. Help yeah. me understand that because, Don, if I, uh, you know, I'm sitting next to you and I and I do this, right. the, every part of your brain told you that I'm real. Yes. Okay, so help me understand what you mean by this isn't real and that was real. Okay. We know that we are going to die. I already established that earlier. And when we do, the, the earthly vessel that we inhabit is going to decay. It will cease to exist. I mean, if an archaeologist found, I've had 34 operations to try to put me back together again. They had to reattach things, arms and legs, and, and I have the scars to show for it. If an archaeologist found my body 500 years from now, they think they found the missing link because I've been re -put, <laughs> I mean, put back together again. But you know what? Even that body will be fleeting someday. In heaven, in hell, it never dies. It never is fleeting. It never decays. It will never eventually disappear. It is an eternal place, and this is not eternal. And that is reality, and that is where we're going, the, one of those places, and this is not. Okay. Your turn. Uh, if you just tuned in, we're sitting with Don Piper, Reverend Howard Storm. Don uh, went to heaven when he died, was hit by a truck. And then, what was your condition again? You just, you, oh, you had, had a, a perforation the, of the stomach. Yeah, you had a, you had a Dude. perforated duodenum, I think, is what you said. And and okay. um, wait, okay, uh, just the 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 reality <laughs> thing. This is not real, and what you experienced was real. Help me well, add to what Don just said. Because right now, this is what we know. This is our measure of what is true, what is real. But the fact of the matter is, is that we were created by God to be spiritual beings. We, our purpose is to be with God forever. That's what God created us for and what God wants, okay. to live with God forever as spiritual beings. So God, in his infinite wisdom, has given us this experience of the physical world to prepare us to choose what we want to do for eternity. Wow. And it's our choice. You know... God is not in the punishment business. No. God is in the love business. People yeah. choose hell. Millions of people are going to hell because they refuse to love God. Yeah. They reject God. Okay? And it's, and it's horrible. And that's why I'm here. That's why I came here tonight from the other side of the United States, to tell people to choose God. Okay. How, how, did, how did that change your life? When you came oh, back into your body, what was the... Every, everything. And I, was, I, was, I wept for days and weeks because I was like, okay, where am I going to begin rebuilding my life? I, you know, okay, I got to give up the booze. I got to give up the cigarettes. I got to give up the womanizing. I got to give up the lying. I got to give up the, 
the pursuit of power. I got to give up the the need for fame. You know, I, on and on and on and on and control. You know, and raging and stuff like all that stuff's got to go. Where do I begin? How do I love people? I started. Everybody I've met, I'm sick in the hospital, really, really sick. And everyone I met, I'm like, I love you. I'm like, Jesus, Jesus. You know, and they're like, and they're going like, back, 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 go away, go away. You know, and, and then I started reading. And then when I got my eyesight back and started reading them, because I lost my eyesight, so when I got my eyesight and started reading the Bible, then I became a Bible thumping zealot. And I lost everybody, everybody in the world, you know, because I would, I would thunder read the Bible. And I figured if they wouldn't believe me, if I read the Bible loud enough and strong enough, you know, and I had a pretty big voice as a teacher, you know, I could get it through them. Didn't work. Worked out wow. real bad. Turned wow. everybody off. And it was church. It was at church, you know, um, helping the uh, teenagers in Sunday school and stuff like that and um, participating in worship and I'm taking the kids on uh, camping trips and stuff like that where I started working in a soup kitchen where I started to learn that it's, it's like living it, not preaching it. So you you came out, you were agnostic, you have your d near death, or you died and yeah. taken to hell, and you come back. Did you know that Jesus, I mean, did you have enough knowledge that, or well, did you go to a church and, and further, get saved? Further in the experience, I called on him, and he came and took me out of that and re oh. reshaped my whole wow. life. Okay, so here's 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 a good question, Don. We know why it had to had to happen to Mr. Storm here. Why do you think that 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 happened to you? You know, I uh, was in a hospital bed for 13 months and uh, and lost my arms and legs and and they didn't think I would ever walk again and um, or that I would ever have the use of um, the arm that had wound up this arm wound up in the back seat of the car. Um, I, I asked myself, lying flat on my back all those months, you know, why. I was on my way to church to lead a Bible study. Yeah. Well, you know, I wasn't in the wrong why place. Me, yeah, you know? why? Why me? And, and 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 this year, I think I have a better answer than I did 20 years ago when it happened. And it's it's so that I can tell people heaven is real. Yeah. And that you can go there. Yeah. It's a real place, and more real than this. I mean, there are gates. Uh, there is a street made of gold. There are incredible uh, structures, very ornate and very elaborate. There is a hill high and lifted up. At the pinnacle of that hill is the brightest light of all because the Lord God is there. And what I wanted to do is go through the gates up the street and fall at his feet and say, thank you for letting me be here. That's how real heaven is. So I know now the reason... That I came back is to tell people yeah. heaven is real and that Jesus is the way. Yeah. You can go there yeah. through Christ, and that's what we're. That's what we want to do. That's why we're still here. We're here to help everyone else get there. Reverend yeah. Storm, you uh, you are the what you used to be was someone that uh, would have tuned into a program like this and said. Okay, everyone in the audience that's all, you know, made up, these stories are made up, you're trying to get ratings. Is that how you would have perceived it, or would you have you've just said, everyone on that set and everyone in that studio are crazy? How, how, would, you have, how would you have perceived it? I love this part right here. That there is an interest in God in everyone, even if they say they don't believe in God. Even with I love this part right here. You? Yeah. And, that, the event. and there's a battle going on, raging on inside of them. But I want to—I want to say something that in response to this, right? Don't believe you. Don't mm. believe Don. Don't believe me. Don't believe TVN. Don't believe the church. Go to the source. If you go to the source, if you say, "Jesus, I need you. I've never believed in you, and I don't know if you're real, but Jesus, I need." Mm. To know if you're real, will you come into my life? If you do that, and if you mean it from your heart, and if you sit there and wait, and don't get all frustrated and get impatient and stuff like that, but just say, Jesus, Jesus, please come into my life. I've been a rotten person, and I don't know why you touch a piece of filth like me, but please, Jesus, come into my life, which is what I did. He will come. You know, it may not be. You know. Why didn't you do that before your experience? I didn't know. I wish some idiot like me or you or Don had come and said, you know what? 
You know what? All this philosophical speculation that you're doing all the time between existentialism and all this stuff, you know, why don't you just ask him if he's real? Wow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's Absolutely. Beautiful. So that's that's all it would have taken? Yeah, because I, be I, I really believe that he would have done something. You know, it doesn't, not, not necessarily going to be struck by lightning or run over by a truck or it, it, it may just be, as uh, John Wesley said, a strange warming of the heart mm -hmm. when you just know that you know that you know that you know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, in case uh, you just tuned in, we're here in beautiful Southern California. Uh, we have a whole group of people that have joined us on the Praise the Lord program from uh, Teen Challenge right here in uh, Southern California. And, uh, we've got these guys know a little bit about being broken people yeah. that have been rebuilt yeah. by the love and the power of Jesus. And uh, we, have, we have people that can testify to what, you know, happened to you if you just tuned in. Uh, sitting with us, Don Piper and Reverend Howard Storm. Uh, Don, on the left side of your screen, was hit by a truck and he saw a light and beautiful friends and family members. Uh, Howard uh, was met by a group of, I guess, demons. Yeah. Okay, and they said, "Come with us," and and they tortured you and and tormented you until you really. Uh, one of the little pieces of your story, you called on God in that kind of out-of-body experience? Yeah. You find, find that's a pretty fortunate situation. I mean, you well, got to... Well, I think I, I have to give credit to a woman whose name I don't know and whose face I can barely remember no. who taught a study loves little kid in Sunday school. Jesus loves me, this wow. I know. Wow. And... That's what came to me in that horrible, hellish place of darkness and torment was that memory. But more importantly, it came to me that when I was a little boy, I was convinced that that was true, that there was this really cool guy named Jesus who did love me. And I used to pray to him, and I used to believe in him. But as a teenager, you know, I just went astray. Wow. So I give her the credit. So that is really what came to you in this out-of-body experience. You were in a hospital, you flatlined, you died, and you left your body. Yeah. And boy, do I love to be part of Vacation Bible Schools. Because oh, we, get, we get kids who have never heard of oh, Jesus yeah. except as a cuss word, you know, and, sure. it's, and you get to tell them about Jesus and you see their little eyes light up. You know, wow, it's cool. <laughs> You're the sweetest guy. Really? I, it's just amazing. I mean, I, I, I'm glad I met you after the experience. Because you can see that part of your personality where you were probably a pretty tough guy at one point. Yeah, I thought I was the biggest, baddest bear in the woods. I, I did. Yeah. I don't know if I would have wanted to take a course from you. Right? Yeah, really. Okay, Don, you got to see goodness, light, all of that. Your experience continue with the good part of the story here you know i'm not so sure that the woman you're talking about might not have been my next door neighbor you know because uh, one of the people i saw at the gates of heaven was my next door neighbor when i was nine years old my dad was in the army and he was overseas and we didn't have a way to go anywhere my mother didn't have a driver's license and i could look out the window on sunday morning and see people driving off to church and wondering why we couldn't go she found out about it and she came over and picked me up on Sunday mornings and took me to church. Mrs. Norris was her name. And she greeted me at the gates of heaven. I, I wouldn't have expected to see her there. I, I, I was amazed when I did see her there. I hadn't even thought about her in years, and there she was. But she helped me get there, right, you know? Right. She helped me get there, and she was there to greet me when I got there, which I think means we're all here to help everyone else get there. And that's why we're still here. Yeah. 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 It's amazing to me that the things we do that just seemingly don't seem very important at all. Wow. They just might be a word or yeah. so crucial 
to the salvation of yeah. thousands, perhaps yeah. millions. And so it's not just because you're on a television show or you're a preacher yeah. or anything else like that. It's a next door neighbor. Right. It's a lady who sang a song to you. Yeah. It's the things that we do that are investments in eternity that really matter. Yeah. And I, yeah. I can testify that it's awesome. What did like you it. see? What else did you see in heaven? There are 12 gates in heaven. I was at one of them. It uh, looked like the inside of an oyster. It looked like mother of pearl. Yeah. Um, it was dazzling. Uh, I know I would have been blinded by it with earthly eyes. Uh, and it was above these people. We spoke a language I have never heard here, but we, uh, I fully understood what they said. Um, we communicated uh, completely. There were no questions, only declarative statements, because see what there are no need for questions. Right. People, when somebody says something, you understand all it ever meant. So there's perfect communication. Uh, my grandfather extended his hands, and he said, uh, he said, uh, welcome home, Donnie. He's the only person who called me that. Uh, parts of his hands were missing in real life because he had been a carpenter for 50 years. But when he reached his hands out to me, all of his fingers, which I had never seen before, were there. Um, everyone was complete and perfect in every way. Um, there is a street that goes right down the middle of the city. Uh, I could see it through the gates uh, that looks to be made of, uh, of gold. Um, I, I didn't find it to be figurative language at all. It was really a street made of gold. And there really are structures inside that were more ornate and elaborate than I've ever seen uh, here on earth, and I've seen some nice places. The, these had to be the mansions that Jesus refers to when he said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Wow. If it were not so, I would have told you. And then above that is that hill that I was referring to. It's kind of pinnacle, really, and there's a river that flows from the side of it. I know now it's the river of life, but at the top of that hill was that light. I was moving past the crowd, that greeted me, my welcoming committee, if you will, and I was moving through a series of, of aromas, uh, through a series of sounds, because heaven is a sensory explosion, yeah. through, through uh, the sounds of the wings of angels. You were greeted by those dark beings. I was greeted by uh, brilliant beings, beautiful beings. Uh, some were hovering about. You could hear their wings. And then the single most profound memory I had of heaven was one, again, I wouldn't have thought before this happened to me, which was music. Hmm. The music permeates the place. It's like you actually, the music inhabits you. And all the songs at the gates of heaven were glorifying God. They were singing hallelujah. They were singing glory to God. They were singing praise the Lord. And then the chorus over and over again was holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Because he is. He is holy, and it's a holy place, and uh, that's why we can't go uh, without Christ. We can't. We're not holy, and so we need Jesus to uh, to be forgiven of our sins, so that we could be in the presence of the Holy God. But th but they were singing it over and over again. I can close my eyes right now, and I can still hear that music. It's my most personal, powerful memory of my experience in heaven. Uh, the music that just kind of goes with me everywhere I go. And, and I'm, I'm driven because I want you to hear it. Yeah. yeah. I want you to hear it. Let me ask you both uh, just kind of a series of quick questions. Just in case someone thinks that you're making this up, you ugly, really man. were dead in a car Fat. for how long? Four paramedics. Uh, there was, it was four a vehicle accident, one truck and three cars. So four paramedics, four ambulances were dispatched to the scene. Uh, no one else was hurt, thankfully. So that meant that four professionals were working on me. They were unsuccessful in reviving me. So those four pronounced me dead on the scene. This leg was on the floor of the car. This arm was in the back seat of the car. My head was crushed. I had brain damage and internal injuries. Uh, I, I died at 11.45 a.m., which was the collision. A man who was behind me. Uh, one of the other pastors came upon the accident. He got permission to get near the car. He crawled in. By was, police? Yes. There were police there? Were there were police everywhere. Everything. Oh, yeah. Police everywhere. In fact, they said don't get near the car. Uh, it's dangerous, and you don't want to see what's in the car. What day of the week all of this happened? What day was this? Wednesday this? morning. Uh, I was on my way to lead a prayer meeting at my church in the south of Houston, Texas. That and night. the date that this happened? Was, uh, January 18th, 1989. At what time? 11.45 a.m. So this would be all a matter of record. Oh, sure. We have, yeah. the, we have the police records, yeah. And when did your experience happen? June 1st, 1985, 8.30 at night. What hospital? Uh, this was at Cochin in Paris. Cochin, 
That's the name of the hospital. The assistance yeah. public to Paris um, in Paris. Okay. Oh, it was in in Paris. Yeah. In France. Okay. And so that happened. That's a matter of record. Yeah. Your body was laying on a table, and you were pronounced dead by a doctor. Well, I hadn't seen a doctor all day, so no, I wasn't pronounced by anybody. So this happened when you were on I, a I, table. I went to that hospital and I lay there for 10 hours and never saw a doctor. No. Never gave any medication. I had no drugs. I Nobody took my blood pressure. Nobody took my temperature. Nothing. Okay. Welcome to Paris. Yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Social, Social medicine. Wow. Yeah. And so uh, the, the facts are that both of you had out-of-body experiences. Yeah. You died, Don. You were pronounced dead right. by paramedics, Four and, paramedics. And, and so just in case somebody thinks you're making this up that that's all a matter of record yeah, yeah absolutely. and all the all doctors in the united states said i should have only lived five hours I would, it's like having a burst appendix and um all the doctors that in the united states said we don't know why you're alive you shouldn't be alive did you have a choice to come back um no because i wanted to go to heaven you know what Don's talking about? I want, sure. you know, I'm talking to Jesus. He's telling me about heaven. And I was like, you know, that's a no brainer. You want to yes. go there. And, uh, and he persuaded me that that wasn't going to happen. And I needed to come back and do a little. Um, oh, and get uh, right. Yeah, get right. Oh, wow. And did you find yourself instantly back in your yes. body? Or did you? Okay. And Don, were you just bam, just yeah. bam, yeah, the, the, back the, in your body? The preacher, that, Don. the preacher was in the car uh, from behind uh, the dick on a wrecker. And he reached around the, the driver's seat of the car after God told him, pray for the man in, in the red car, which would have been me. And he just did what God told him to do because he never prayed for a dead man or thought about it. But he knew God was telling him to do it. So he crawled in the car, he puts his hand on my shoulder, and he has been praying now for an hour and a half because he came upon the accident immediately. And he's been singing hymns, prayers, hymns, prayers, hymns. He's singing What a Friend We Have in Jesus at 1.15 in the afternoon from the 1145 accident. And as he's holding on to my shoulder and singing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, suddenly I start singing it with him. Yeah. And he got out of the car real fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. You would have gotten out yeah. fast. Of course you would. And he, he, he essentially ran over to the policeman and said something like this, The dead man is singing. Uh, and... Uh, they, uh, he convinced them to come and check on me. They were very reluctant to do so because they'd already done everything they could for me. They found out I was alive, and then they had to figure out how to get me out of that wrecked car. Now, did you have a choice, or did you just start hearing something and something? No choice. Um, okay. No, I, I, I don't sense that had I got any further than I did, I could have come back. Uh, people often ask me, did you see Jesus? And I, I did at the pinnacle of that hill. But I didn't get very close, and honestly, I'm glad I didn't get any closer than I did, because if I had, I'd seen him and had that taken away from me, I don't think I could have been functional here at all. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm glad I have yet to do that. Yeah. But I didn't get a choice. I, I, I came back, and as we said earlier, I asked when I did, why? Why, why, did, you send, why did you let me see that and take it away from me? Mm -hmm. And I think the reason is, so I, I could say with absolute certainty to anyone who wants to know that heaven is the most real place of all. Wow. And then you can go there. Reverend uh, Storm, you know, back when you were kind of a tough guy and, and an intellectual and you were your own God, you would have just, you would have loved to, I think the only thing you wanted back then was the final word. And uh, I give that to you tonight in the last minute of our time together. Uh, somebody's watched this, okay. the heaven, the hell. They're still I mean, not convinced. You have one minute okay. to, to, to debrief. I, wanna, I, I think John will um, go along with this. That Don and I know we're going to heaven. And there is nothing in the world. No power that can stop that from happening. Not because Don and I are good people. We're not good people. Matter of fact, Don and I are here to tell you that we are sinners. Hmm. And that all people, and us especially, deserve to go to hell. But we have put our hope, our faith, and trust in a man who was sent by God 2,000 years ago who said, I will come and take you to where I am. I have prepared a place for you. 
Wow. He said that. And it's written down in a book. The book of John. He will come because he loves us and he knows our faults and he knows we're not worthy and he knows you're not worthy and he will take you there. And he has paid the price of all the rotten stuff we've done. Wow. All the bad things he's done. He's, I love this it's part. covered because he's a just God. <laughs> And he wants it. us to be with him because he loves us. We are his children. He made you. He made your mind. He made your hair. He made your face. He made your life. And he just wants you to trust him. And he will take care of you for all of eternity. Ask him to come into your heart. You don't have to experience anything big. But it will grow. And you will know that nothing Bye, bye, can mom. keep you from heaven and from the arms of Jesus Christ. Don Piper, Reverend Howard Swan, thank you for being here. Amazing. Heaven and Hell Night continues. And Christian, what a perfect song. How lovely your dwelling place. Take it away, Christian. We'll see you right back here.